Hello, Carm 3D on the tube. I'm making this video for a friend who is uh, doing some renderings and uh, he's uh, just lighting his stuff with ambient occlusion and I was suggesting to him some other options so that's why I'm making this video. Let's uh, say for the sake of argument that radiosity is just out of the question. He's doing gigantic resolution, he's doing long animations, so uh, radiosity was, uh, would just take too long. So um, I'm going to show you some alternatives that can approach the look of radiosity. It's you know it's never going to match radiosity for quality, but it's got its own distinct look. But it's not too bad, and uh, in most cases it'll take less time to render. So uh, I just threw this scene together. It's got uh, a little sculpture I was working on, and I put it on a stand, and I got some balls around it, and a curtain in back there. Anyway, so I got only one light source in the scene. Let's render it out, see what this looks like. The lighting is very stark. Very uh, high contrasty. Oh, and I forgot one thing, but it's good because I could show you this very important part. Actually, I forgot two things. Okay, here's the render. Uh, the first important thing, and this is a light wave specific thing, this is your ambient intensity. And for some strange reason, this is the default value. 5. It's not 0, but it's very close. Um, we're, for what we're doing, this is a no-no. So we got to turn that down. I don't know why that's the default setting for Lightwave 5%. It's constantly mystifies me, but whenever we're dealing with uh, compositing stuff, got to turn that down to 0. And uh, the other thing I have to deal with is is this guy here you can see is blue and uh, that's that's not good either so I'm gonna turn my sky black and we'll render it again actually I'll just tell it to save this time <clears throat> and we'll skip this that's better. Nothing makes the rendering go by quickly than a little video editing. Okay, so um, let's pretend that this is an animation. And I have gone and rendered the whole animation with this lighting setup. <clears throat> and uh, and now just this is optional. I'm going to uh, I'm going to move this light around a little bit. See, do a little side lighting action there. Probably look nice once everything's put together. And uh, so let's render this scene out. Oh, wait, one thing. I have to uh, change my f file name. It's going to save as. The last one was saved as key. So this one I'll save as side. And I'll see you when the rendering's done. Okay, there's that. Um, now, for this step, you know, we have the the key in the light, uh, the key in the side, rather. Uh, I'm going to do another pass where I'm going to take this light and turn its intensity to zero. By the way, I had it cranked up to 400% because I'm using this inverse distance fall off, so. It uh, doesn't look quite that extreme. It doesn't look like a 400 whatever watt light bulb when you're rendering with, with the uh, inverse distance, unless you put the light really close to the subject. But anyway, I'm rambling. And uh, this time, 
I'm turning the ambient intensity to 100%. Light is off, and ambient intensity is 100%. So now I'm going to go through my services and apply ambient occlusion to them. So uh, I will be back at the other end of that procedure. Okay, here it is, all ambient occlusion. Uh, for you newcomers, ambient occlusion is a shader. Uh, in this case, I've applied it to my diffuse channel of all the objects. And it basically says that uh, as another surface gets closer to it, it gets darker. So you can see it's all dark right here where these two surfaces are very close together, where the balls are close to the ground, etc. And then out in the, where in the open, where nothing's close to it, it's, it's full shading. Uh, full value of the shading. So uh, it, it get, kind of gives the impression that objects next to it are blocking the light from the environment from hitting it. So it's kind of a fakey way to uh, do lighting in certain circumstances and this will be one of those circumstances. So uh, this was saved and uh, there's one final step I'm going to render. Basically, I'm going to render in that blue sky area here because uh, I didn't want that to be part of either of those passes. So that will be unadulterated. So I will see you when that is set up. And there it is. I just made the sky white so we can uh, have uh, all the colors of the rainbow we could choose from inside the compositor. So there we go. We got the, the, the key lighting, the side lighting the ambient occlusion, and the sky. So now I'm going to move to the compositor and we'll put all this stuff together and play with it. So I'll see you inside the compositor. And here we are in the compositor. I've got my elements dragged in here, the ambient occlusion, the key, the side, and the sky. So uh, let's go look at our preview. Here's the key rendering. side rendering, ambient occlusion, and the sky. Okay, so uh, let's look over here. Let's see, uh, the first thing I'll do, I will create a background to start from scratch here, kind of like a blank slate. Okay, background just makes it black background. Let me just set the size there. And we'll add a merge node. Okay. So now with the key merged into the... Let's see if I can get these both on screen at the same time. Well kind of close. So, if I click on the merge node here, and of course we got the, uh, the controls here, I can change the blending, so it's basically making that uh, darker. Actually what I'll do is I'll change this merge to screen mode. Alright, so I'm going to add another merge mode. Node. Do I keep saying mode? 